two, one. All right, so I was asked actually a question on this simple interest equivalent values and equal payments. So I'll come up uh, with a short video on how to approach these types of questions. That's a common question sometimes you're given when you're working with equivalent values. So here it is. Let's imagine that, uh, and I'm gonna make these numbers up, and I guess you guys uh, that are studying, you can apply the numbers um, that you have from whatever questions that you're dealing with. Um, so for all of these equivalent values, I love to draw a timeline. So I'm gonna draw a timeline in here. And the question that we're gonna deal with is, imagine, okay, so that, let's say our focal date, okay, so let's say is right now, and you know we have um, either invested, okay, or we have some kind of a debt or something like that where we're taking it on, and let's make that debt, let's say $10,000, all right? So you can have whatever debt that you have. And now you're supposed to, let's say, imagine you can pay this debt off with, let's say, two equal payments. Now you can have three equal payments, four, okay, how many you like, but let's say you have two equal payments. And I'll put in here, so let's imagine that we have one equal payment. Now we don't know what that equal payment will be, so, and, but let's just say it's at six months. And then let's say the other one is gonna be at 15 months. All right, so those are the two payments. Now, I don't know what they are. I'm gonna call them X, but they are equal to each other. So I'm gonna use X for both of them. All right, so now we of course need um, the simple interest itself. So what is it per annum? And I will make that up as well. So let's say that we're going to be using a rate of, let's say, 5% per annum. And it is simple interest. So this is not compounding at all. So how would we find, okay, this, okay, or these two payments so that we have an equivalent value of 10000 maybe for a debt that we have taken out before? Okay, so this is how you would approach it. So we wanna bring these two values back, right? So let's say our focal date is right now, so we wanna bring this payment back, I'm gonna call this number one, and we wanna bring this one back as well, okay, all the way over here, so this is gonna be my payment number two. So those are my two payments. Now, when you're working with this, we know that if we're gonna set the focal date right now, then we have $10,000 is gonna be equal to your payment number one that has been moved back by six months, plus your payment number two, which has been moved back in this case by 15 months. Now you can use whatever times frames that you have, right? Maybe it's a year, two years or whatever. I'm using six months and 15 here. And now, so how do I bring these values back? Well, if we're gonna bring it back, okay, um, towards right now, then we're gonna be using, kind of uh, bringing it back to the present value, right? So we have to take the formula. Um, so if you remember, so for our actual formula going back to, let's say future values for simple interest. So typically sometimes what you might use is S, which might be the summation value or FV, which is the future value. It is equal to whatever your principle is and that principle, and then it's one plus RT, but that's moving it forward, correct? Now, if we're moving it back, because we are right now, we're gonna bring those payments back. So we're gonna have to use okay, the formula that we wanna have P, Okay, our future values, which are going to be our x, and this is 1 plus our t here. So we're going to be using this formula, and I'm going to use it. So first, so this is going to be at six months. Now, how will this look like? So bringing this back right here, so this x, okay, so it's in the future. So that's going to be, so my s is x, okay, divided by, one plus, now my rate, I mean, I set the rate at 5%, okay, so right here. So again, let's not forget, we have to change it back to decimal. So that's my rate, 0 0.05. And my T, I have to be careful with my T, because my T is supposed to be in years. 
and that's going to be 6 over 12, which is half a year, right? So I'm bringing it back by six months. So that's my first, all right? So this is, of course, I don't know what that value of x is because that's what I'm trying to find out, but I do know um, all the values in the denominator. Now, my second one that I'm going to bring back, which is the one at 15 months, let's say this one, and that's going to be x again. It's going to be the same amount. However, our denominator changes. So it's still 5%. But now I am at 15 months, which is going to be 15 over 12 if you want to change it back to years. And that's what this would be. So with these two, now what happens is this formula right here. So we have 10,000, which is our focal, at our focal date. That's supposed to be equal to, okay? And now it's supposed to be equal to this. So I'm gonna duplicate it. Okay, I'm gonna make it smaller so that we have some space. Plus our second one, which is this. Okay, so I'm gonna duplicate that and put it in here, make it a touch smaller, all right? And now you're just solving for x. Once you solve for x, then you can find out exactly what this is, all right? So I can find those denominators, okay, in both cases. So let's do that. And so for that, what would that be? So let's say in the denominator in the first one, so I have one plus, I guess, 0 0.05 um, multiplied by, well, it's six over 12 is just, half. So this is what the denominator will be, okay, at the bottom there. So I have x all over. And sorry, what was that? Oh, I changed it. Okay, so it's going to be, there we have it, 1.025 plus, let's say the other one. So I have 1 plus 0 0.05. And that's going to be multiplied by I guess 15 over 12, okay, if you, if you like, you can put that in there okay. in this way. You don't wanna do it in your head. So we're gonna have that. So that's X all over 1.0625, okay? And the whole thing is equal to 10,000. So now, well, this is the, let's not forget. I mean, we don't really want those values in the denominators, um, so I'm gonna, do this the following. So there is a one in front of here and in front of here. So I'm gonna take one divided by this, 1.025. So one divided by 1.025, all right, which is gonna be that long number of decimals, okay, that we have. So I do recommend, you know, try to keep as many digits here as you like, okay, um, nine, Okay, I'm gonna kind of round it in here. So this is gonna be nine, seven, five, six, one, X. And then the second one is gonna be plus, okay? So that's gonna be one divided by 1.0625. So this one's gonna be 0 0.94117647060X. Now these are like terms, right? Because they both have an X, so I can add these two values together. And since I already have this on the calculator, okay, I don't, I don't wanna rewrite it again, but I'll add the other one, 0 0.97560975615, which is gonna be equal to 1.91678, all right, 6227x. And notice dividing now because we're solving for x, so I want to take 10,000 divided by this particular number and I've solved for whatever that payment will be. And that payment's going to be the same for both values in time. All right. So to finish this off, since I have this already in the calculator right here, this 1.91. Okay. So it's going to be, let me just maybe clear it So 10, 1, 2, 3. Um, divided by 
8.6.2.2.7. Okay, so it becomes a little annoying because you have to put those in. So it's approximately, okay, this much. All right. Because they are in the future and there's 5%, it, it should definitely be, you know, more than 5,000, right? Because we're moving it uh, from the future backwards. And that's how you would actually approach these type of kind of equivalent values um, with equal payments for possibly a debt or something like that, or even if you're working with investments or, or, or things of that nature. All right. Okay. So I hope you found this useful. Okay. Cheers, everybody.